Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A little while ago, I did a video demonstrating some of the new features found in the CURD version of Photoshop. One of the new features I talked about in that video is something called Generate Image. Now, in that video, I just gave overviews of the new features. I really didn't go into great detail, but I did mention that I would be, in the near future, doing individual videos on each of the new features where I would go into greater detail. In today's video, I'm going to go into greater detail on how to use Generate Image in Photoshop. Now, as you can see, I have Photoshop open. This is the current version of Photoshop. This is not the beta version. This is version 25.11. And I want to get right to Photoshop. So I'm just going to click on the little PS in the top left-hand corner. When I do, you can see I'm in Photoshop. And this new feature, Generate Image, is in the toolbar. It's over here at the very bottom, but you'll notice it's grayed out. The reason why it's grayed out is you actually need an image opened up into Photoshop in order to generate an image. And that may sound counterintuitive, but it really isn't. Because you really just need a blank image. You need to tell Photoshop what dimensions you want your generated image to be. And by the way, if you do not see the generated image um, icon down here in your toolbar, just right click on these three dots and then go to edit toolbar. When you do, you'll get this. And when you see this, click on restore defaults. And when you do that, you should have this icon down here. But as I mentioned, it's still grayed out. We need to have an image opened up. Just a blank image. That's all you need. So we're going to go up to File and we're going to go to New. And I'm just going to use a 3000 by 2000 pixel image. Now there is a resolution limit on Generate Image. It's, I believe, 2000 by 2000 pixels. Now that doesn't mean I can't use 6,000 by 4,000, say. It will fill every single pixel. It will just be lower resolution. So it'll be a bit blurry because it's only going to be at 2,000 by 2,000. And when it gets maxed out to 6,000 by 4,000, it won't look as clear. But for this demonstration, let's use 3,000 by 3, uh, 2,000 and click Create. Now I have this blank canvas to start with, and you'll notice that generate image is active over here. And you'll also notice that it's in the contextual taskbar. If you do not see the contextual taskbar, go up to window and then go down to the very bottom and just make sure that it has a check mark next to it. It is also in the edit menu. So if you go to the edit menu, it's right here, generate image. So you could access it there as well. Now it doesn't matter which one you use. You'll always, when you click on one of them, you'll come up with this generate image uh, prompt and dialog box. Now, if you're familiar with Adobe Firefly, which is their website where you could actually generate image, this is the same exact thing. They've just taken Fo Firefly and they built it into Photoshop. Now, the way you would use this is you would tell it what type of image you want. And then you have some options for that image. For example, uh, let's say I just want an image of a puppy and a kitten because I like puppies and kittens. Who doesn't? So I'd like um, a puppy and a kitten sleeping together. All right. Now I'm actually going to just copy this because I'm going to use this prompt a lot. So I'm just, so I don't have to type it out each time. Now you have the option to choose a piece of art or a photo. So if you want artwork, definitely do artwork. But since you're probably a photographer, if you're watching one of my videos, we're going to click on photo. Then we have two other options. They have to do with style. You could use a reference image. So if you click here, you could use one of their built-in reference images. And what will happen is it will use that image as a reference to what you want your image to look like. Optionally, instead of using one of their images in their gallery, you can see there's a lot here, you could click on choose image and upload one of yours. Now I am going to use one of mine in a future uh, thing in a second, I should say, uh, but we're not going to do it yet. And I am going to use one of theirs just so you could, sh I could show you how it works, but not yet. So we're going to turn this off. Also under style, you could choose an effect and you can see there's do dozens of effects. You know, there's 3d art nouveau, there's cartoon effects. And as I mentioned, there's dozens. Now I am going to use an, an effect in a future version, just not right at the moment. So we're going to turn that off. We're going to keep this very simple. I just want a puppy and a kitten sleeping together, and it's going to be a photo, and that's it. I'm going to click Generate. 
What I do, it of course will send my prompt up to Adobe and Adobe will come up with three variations of a puppy and a kitten sleeping together. And you'll see there's one. Now, isn't that cute? Come on. And there's a second one and there's a third one. So you have three variations. Now, if you don't like any of these variations, you could click on generate and generate three more variations. Also, if you made a mistake with your prompt or you want to be a little more specific, you could change your prompt as well. For example, uh, maybe you wrote, um, you know, a blonde on a beach and it gave you a uh, blonde, but the blonde happened to be like a man and you wanted a woman. So you could say a blonde woman on the beach or something like that. So you clarify it. So in this case, let's just say I like them, but I want to just generate three more. So I'll just click generate three more. And again, it will send my prompt up to Adobe and it will come up with three different variations of a puppy and a kitten sleeping together, as you could see in a moment. And there's the fourth variation, the fifth and the sixth. Now let's start over. So I'm going to go to my history panel right here, and I'm just going to go back to our blank canvas and I want to try something else. So I'm going to click generate image. And again, I'm going to go with a puppy and kitten sleeping together. And we're, again, we're going to go to a photo. But this time, let's use a reference image. Now, I'm just going to try to find a reference image in here. And by the way, these tend to change. So you may find one you like on Tuesday, but then you come in here on Friday, and that one you used in the past isn't there anymore. And there's different ones here. So that happens a lot. I'm going to go with this one only because uh, it's kind of a lower key image. So I want to give my puppy and kitten a lower key look. So I'm going to go with that. And I could do an effect on top of that, but I'm not going to yet, at least. So I'm going to click generate. So again, we're just doing a puppy and kitten sleeping together. It's going to be a photo, but I'm using this lower key image. You can see as soon as I clicked on it, it loaded it right here. It's just kind of a darker image and the colors are a bit muted. So we'll click on that. And again, it'll send this prompt and that image up to Adobe servers and it will come up with three variations of the puppy and the kitten so you could see in a moment and you can see that this one's just a little darker a little darker background still very very cute so you could see how you could use a reference image to give your image a specific look but there is something else we could do as well let's again let's go back into our blank canvas and again we're going to click on generate and again it doesn't matter if you click the contextual taskbar or click the toolbar We'll get the same thing. So again, we're going to go with our puppy and kitten sleeping together. We're going to go off a photo. But instead of a reference image, let's use an effect. And I really like the Art Nouveau look. Art Nouveau is going to be a little bit of a washed out color, usually. So we'll go with that. Now, I could use a reference image as well if I wanted to. But I'm just going to do that. So a puppy and kitten sleeping together, a photo. And we're going to go to the Art Nouveau look. So let's click Generate. And again, it's going to come up with this new look. So you could see how you could just use a single prompt. I've used the same prompt now three times, but we're getting a different look each time. So you could see here's the more of an out nouveau look. It's a little more, a little more higher key, a little more kind of muted colors compared to what uh, the other one was, maybe a little more earth tone as well. So that's a different look. And by the way, if you did this and you said, you know what, I wanted to try a different um you know, effect. You could access it here. You don't have to start over and then click generate again. You could just click right here and add a reference image, or you could click right here and add a effect. So you could do it on the fly if you need to. I've been starting over just to show you the different ways I could use the same exact prop and get all these different looks by using different effects in different reference images. Now, what if you want to use one of your own reference images? And that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to show you how to do that. So again, I'm going to go up to my history panel. I'm going to go back to my blank canvas. And my reference image is actually a stock image. Let me minimize this. I have it on my desktop. Uh, this is just a stock image, an Adobe stock image. And I've actually used this image recently on my Photoshop course. So if you go to my website, anthonymarcanti.com, you can see I have a course on Photoshop called Photoshop Unleashed. It's not released yet. It'll be released September 14th. I currently have it on pre-sale where you could save quite a bit of money. And you can see I used it on the box. I'll have a link to my course in the description below this video. Now, 
I want to use that as the reference image. Now, one thing I got to warn you, when you use Firefly or you use Generate Image inside of Photoshop, or really any application that allows you to generate an image, like you know, an AI image, uh, if you're generating people, you have to be very careful and make sure that they have five fingers on each hand and five toes on each foot. Because for some reason, when we generate these images in, of people, uh, they like to add extra fingers or they like to have fingers going off in weird angles or fingers on top of fingers. Also, if you have a group image that you've generated, let's say, you know, you have three friends in a cafe, uh, sometimes there'll be an extra arm in there or, or an extra foot or something. So you have to be very careful and look very carefully. Now, my reference image, you may notice it was just really shot of the young lady from like the waist up. So um, with because of that, we're not really seeing her fingers and it's going to really rely heavily on the generate image. It's not going to really uh, use my prompt as much. Let me show you. I'm going to click on generate image and I'm going to use um, young young lady in front, oops, if I could type, in front of lake, okay? We're going to do a photo again. We're going to use the reference image, but this time, instead of one of the built-in gallery images, we're going to click choose image. We're going to go to that desktop, and we're going to click the Adobe stock photo. You see it uploaded. It's right here. We're not going to use an effect, but I could. I could put an effect on top of it. And so I have a young lady in front of a lake. And I'm using this reference image. So we're going to click generate. Now, when it does, it's going to come up with very similar images. And I guarantee it's going to be a blonde haired woman because it's using my reference image with blue eyes in all three variations. So it really strongly, strongly uses your reference image when you do it, as you could see. But she's in front of the lake. Now, let's just say, you know, I don't like those colorful tops, so I wanted to, young lady in front of lake, but I'm going to change my prompt. Um, I'm going to write, wearing a black top, all right? You click generate here. It probably, I don't want to make a liar at me, it's probably going to ignore that black top part because it's using your reference image more um, it's, it's, it's using, applying more weight to your reference image than it is your prompt. So what it has determined, you can see in all three cases here, the, the young ladies do not have black tops. What it's doing is it's using your reference image for the person. So we have a blonde haired girl with blue eyes and it's using your prompt for the scene. So we have her in front of a lake. In this case, it probably looks more like a pond, but you get the idea, right? So your reference image is very important. Um, and you'll notice in all cases, because my reference image wasn't showing the model's hands at all, we're not seeing the hands here, so I don't have to worry about extra digits. And trust me, that happens all the time. As a matter of fact, I've generated images uh, just in practice where I've seen um, the person's hands. And in like all three variations, they had something wrong with their hands, uh, their fingernails were like missing or they they had an extra finger more often. So be careful of that. It's, it's very important uh, that you be aware of that. Now, again, uh, it looks pretty good though. I mean, seriously, I think it looks all right. So generate image uh, in Photoshop. Now I should probably wrap up talking about why would you want to do this? Well, probably for the average photographer, you're never going to want to do this. But if you have a newsletter or your blog or if there's maybe a, a bulletin that you write for some organization or something, and um, you don't want to pay for stock images, you could just use Photoshop and generate image to generate the type of image you need for your blog or your you know, bulletin or your newsletter or whatever. You could do it that way. Also, if you're a content creator where you're creating videos on YouTube, it's um, it's known fact that if you have a person in your thumbnail for the video, you're video tends to get more views than if you have a thumbnail without a person in it. So if you don't have a ready access to a model to take your own photos for your thumbnails, you could use generate image to generate an image such as this and use it in your thumbnails. Matter of fact, for the thumbnail for this photo, I'll probably use one of these images that I've just generated. Uh, so you can get the idea of what I'm talking about. So, but again, probably for the average photographer, 
you're probably not going to want to use generated image. And really, again, I'm just talking here and I noticed something. If I zoom in a little bit, you got to be very careful. And look, you see kind of this weird discoloration in her neck here. Like, you know, that's just kind of odd, right? So you got to kind of look very closely at these images and make sure that um, there's not a flaw somewhere that, you know, would cause you to not probably want to, you know, use it in your bulletin or your blog or your uh, your uh, video thumbnail. So that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.